celebrating heaven on earth with the festive garment of love. Dear friends, in today's liturgy on this 28th Sunday of Ordinary Time, year A, our Lord invites us to a feast to celebrate wearing the proper garment of love. The liturgy also reminds of God's generosity and abundance, God's goodness to all, His unconditional love that forgives us and welcomes us as we are for a feast with the Lord Himself and with others whenever we are even as we are together at home or elsewhere, and most especially as we assemble as God's family around the Lord's Eucharistic banquet, the meal of the Word of God and the meal of communion that welcomes all without any distinction of color, race, status, rich or poor, educated or not educated, young or old, just as the Lord would assure us in, 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 of his presence in Matthew chapter 18, verses 20, that wherever two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. Dear friends, this is what happens at the Eucharist. Our Lord invites us at a banquet and he feeds us as one without distinction. Whenever Christians assemble, there is always a feast. There is always a celebration whenever Christians assemble. There is a radiation of a festive spirit of joy, of peace, of appreciation of God, and also appreciation of each other. Whenever Christians assemble, there is a radiation of serenity, of peace, of forgiveness, of reconciliation. It's a feast of, full of spontaneity and outburst of life. Whenever we are and whatever we do, our whole entire life as Christians is meant to be a festive celebration, even in the most challenging moments of our lives. Our joy as Christians is based on the fact that our God is good and generous. Our God is forgiving and loving, and that with his resurrection, Christ victoriously won over every evil, every suffering and every death. So therefore, there is no reason to suffer or to mourn. Dear friends, do our lives and gatherings manifest this festive spirit of joy, this love and reconciliation that our God abundantly offers us through Jesus Christ? What are the evils or the pains or challenges or sufferings that threaten us and the world today? Whatever they are, our God as a loving, merciful Father is greater than our sufferings, our wickedness, our imperfections, our pains, our limitations. And he patiently bestows his love in abundance to all his children, you and me, as we are. Are we ready to receive and share this love to all, even towards our enemies or to those who are poor, marginalized and abandoned? Thank you, Lord, for your fatherly love towards your children. Guide us and help us to enjoy and celebrate well every moment of our lives as a feast with you and with others and never alone. In today's first reading of Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 to 10, God throws a party and prepares the banquet for every nation, every nation. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all people a banquet of rich food, a banquet of fine wine, wines, of food rich and juicy, of fine strained wines. On this mountain, says prophet Isaiah, he will remove the mourning veil that covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's, uh, his people's shame everywhere on earth. For the Lord has said so. And dear friends, when the Lord says, he says. When he speaks, he speaks. Dear friends, it's so beautiful to see how our God himself generously prepares a banquet for all. And he invites us all. How he, it's beautiful to see how he moves the morning veil. Something which obstacles uh, our eyes from seeing the beauty and the beautiful things and the good things of God. How he moves the morning veil from our faces, making us happy again. How our God destroys death forever, giving us life forever. How he wipes away every tear from our eyes, calling everyone to feast from the abundance of whatever good that surrounds us. 
And from today's second reading of Philippians chapter 4, verses 12 to 14, and then 19 to 20, Paul went through moments of joys and pains, of nothingness and of everything. He learned to live in any kind of environment, good or bad. He assures us that we, that when we hold on the Lord who gives us strength, then we shall always be rewarded no matter what we go through. And he says, St. Paul, I know how to be poor and I know how to be rich too. I have been through my initiation and now I am ready for anything, anywhere. Full of stomach or empty of stomach, poverty or plenty. There is nothing I cannot master with the help of the one who gives me strength. All the same, it was good of you to share with me in my hardships. In, in return, my God will fill, fulfill all your needs in Christ Jesus as lavishingly as, uh, as only God can. Dear friends, Lord, we pray that Lord transforms our joys and pains into blessings and helps us to live a good life with him and with others to the full always and in every circumstance of life, good or bad, that we make it a feast. In line with today's gospel on the wedding feast, let us just imagine a party that we have been or a feast that we have, we have offered to others. Anyone who has ever organized any party will appreciate the beautiful work, but also acknowledge the stressful, tiring efforts that are involved in organizing invitations, looking for money, accommodation, transport, entertainment, food and drinks. However, it is all enriching and rewarding and beautiful when the guests enjoy a good, wonderful time and company together, laughing together, sharing memories, and they, as, and they depart expressing their satisfaction for the feast. Even if two or three guests fail to turn up, we can try to understand or simply wonder at their indifferent bad manners and just let things be and just forgive. But imagine if nobody turns up, Think of the disappointment, embarrassment, and frustration of the one who took his time, money, efforts, preparing the party. And in today's Gospel of Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 to 14, we hear of a similar incident from the parable of the wedding feast, whereby our Lord first invited certain people. Unfortunately, they rejected the invitation. So he, in the end, extended his invitation to everyone to the rest of the world, outsiders, people in their by roads, and these came at once and filled the festive wedding hall. The wedding feast is the image, dear friends, is the image of salvation, of liberation, that God, as a loving Father, offers to all his children. He offers a feast. He offers a feast to everyone because he wants all to be happy. It is a wedding since it is the celebration of love. A love that is beyond God our Father and we the children and it makes and it manifests the loving relationship or the bond of a God who is the Father and we as his children or his people. We are all dear friends invited to come to God's party and enjoy at his banquet of life not because we bought the invitation or not because we are better than others but because our God gives us free entrance out of his abundant love about out of his generosity and mercy because his forgiveness because of, with his forgiveness our God has made us new again our life with God and with each other is a feast, dear friends. God wants all people to be saved, to be free. And to be saved and free is to, be, to celebrate a feast, to celebrate and to enjoy the happiness. God wants us to celebrate and enjoy the happiness, the blessings, the peace and joy with Him always and already here and now and in the life after this life forever. He wants us to celebrate these blessings. He rest, but he can only invite. He cannot force anyone to come. He respects our freedom to choose, yeah, to choose yes or no. Unfortunately, there are some of us who reject the Lord's invitation to celebrate love. We, enjoy, we, 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 we reject the Lord's invitation to celebrate love and life with Him. We sometimes use our freedom to reject love. We use our freedom to reject God and others. Yet by rejecting God and others, we are also rejecting and we are actually enslaving ourselves. Some people think that freedom 
is the power to do anything they like, whether wrong or right. They believe they can commit sin and even harm others with their words and actions because they are free. That is actually not freedom, but slavery. Just imagine a person who chooses alcohol, drugs, smoking, and other forms of addiction. He's not free. He becomes a slave as he allows these addictions to drive his life, to overpower him, to control him, instead of him choosing yes to what is good in his life and choosing no to what is harmful to his life and in the lives of others. A man, for example, who abandons his wife for another woman because of a small or even a big mistake does not gain freedom. Rather, he is overweighed and overburdened with more and more marital problems as he multiplies more family problems, making the situation more stressful, worse for him and for others, spending even more time energy, money in courts, tribunals, pretending to run away from the situation instead of humbly facing it as early as possible. Dear friends, some will think that they are running away from such a bad partner only to find oneself with a worse partner and even a more complicated situation than before. The wedding feast or the celebration of marriage is about being constantly present in bad times and good times forever in the life of the other with an untiring love, untiring understanding, dialogue, untiring patience, kindness, untiring forgiveness of each other, of each partner who is bound to make mistakes, not because he or she chooses intentionally to make mistakes, but because he or she is human, just as we are all human, still working on ourselves and learning from our mistakes and limitations. But amidst all these situations at the festive banquet, the king comes in the marriage hall and not says someone in a corner all alone, miserable, he's isolated, he's disgusted with people who are having a good time together. It's like he wants others also to be miserable like him. Nothing moves him, nothing makes him happy. Someone who is dressed in a wedding garment for the feast. What is this wedding garment? St. Augustine said, this is the wedding garment. This guy comes in, he's not dressed for the wedding garment. And St. Augustine defines the wedding garment. But the goal of the commandment or instruction, says St. Paul in 1 Timothy 1, 5, Augustine continues, is love from a pure heart. The wedding garment is love from a pure heart and from a good, clear conscience and from a sincere faith. It's only such love, dear friends, that is the wedding garment. Even in Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14, Paul urges us to clothe ourselves with the garment of love. He says, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, to clothe ourselves with compassion. That's a wedding garment. Kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also do. And over all these, put on the garment of love. That is the bond of perfection. After all, that's the central commandment of Jesus in John chapter 13, verse 34. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you, so you also should love one another. Love, dear friends, is our garment, is our uniform that defines us as true Christians, as noted in John chapter 13, verses 35. This is how all will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Dear friends, do our words and actions define us as Christians who love all, even in our, our enemies? It's often easy to say yes to God's invitation, but fulfilling what God asks of us is not so easy as we think. Because it means rejecting negativity, sin, evil. It means living a positive life with total obedience and reliance on what God wills for us. He wills that we sincerely and totally love Him, others, and ourselves. It means fulfilling what God asks of us uh, as the turning away from selfishness and pride. This saying yes to what God wants from us means learning to be generous to our, in sharing our oneself to others in humility, simplicity, and service. And, and service. It means practicing love in order to be in a feast. Dear friends, the celebration of the Holy Eucharist is called the foretaste of uh, or anticipation of the heavenly banquet on earth. God becomes one with us. The divine is wedded with the human. God weds or joins us with us with every strong bond, with the very strong bond of, of love, dear friends. 
as noted in John chapter 1 verses 4, God decided to come among us and to and God pitched his tent, made his home, and dwelt among us. That's how much God wanted to be with us. At the Eucharistic banquet or feast, we already taste here and now that God with us in his word and in communion. And we continue living that, that communion and that love with simplicity and in a garment of love that is expressed in constant humility, simplicity, service, kindness, gentleness, patience, forgiveness, and compassion. Amen.